Welcome back to Mini Mayhem on the Roundtable. I'm Ultra Fox, and guys, Star may be on a little break, but content on this channel is not slowing down. Over the break, we'll also have a bunch of theories, discussions, and of course, breakdowns. But how are we doing breakdowns? Well, coming July 17th, the Magic Book of Spells is being released as a full-length book in stores, every single page from the show, and a lot more. Think of it like journal number three from Gravity Falls, except we're not waiting till the end of the series to get the book. Now, this book was to hold information in chapters written by all 13 Queens of Muni, but Darren FC gave fans a little treat. After the season 3 finale aired on television, she tweeted out coordinates, leading to individual comic book shops, where the first lucky person to show up got a signed poster, and a deck of trading cards. These cards were nothing to sneeze at either, as the deck was of all 13 Queens of Muni, yes, we got them revealed early. One, because Darren FC is awesome, and two, she probably wanted to minimize the risk of it being spoiled in the book. Should anyone get an early copy and put spoilers online? That if anyone was going to spoil them, it would be her. So this was a win-win situation. Now the Reddit user Maps11 actually posted high quality screenshots of all the cards. So let's run through them, break it all down, and be a little enlightened in human history. You guys ready? Let's dive in. Kicking it all off, we have our protagonist, the beloved Star Butterfly. But here her official title is Star the Underestimated. Guys, that's Star's official title. We have Moon the Undaunted, Eclipse of the Queen of Darkness, and now Star the Underestimated. And personally, I think this title fits her very well. Star and Underestimation goes hand in hand, not just by her mother, but by basically everybody. Star's entire character is pushing past the limits and blowing everyone's expectations out of the water. For example, in the episode Toffee, Lostrick believed him and Star was stuck in this weird realm forever, that there was nothing more they could do than sit tight and, I guess, eat the stew he was going to make, but Star said to hell with that. And despite Glossary underestimating her, she pushed past her limits and created new magic, restoring the realm of magic and creating a brand spanking new wand. Hell, even in Conquer, Star was underestimating her ability to be queen. Tom underestimated her as well, believing she would not be able to defeat Meteora so that she just hide in the underworld. The only person who doesn't underestimate Star is Marco, having faith in her from the very beginning. Now Star is a Roly sign, which I'm I'm assuming it's like a zodiac sign, but for Muni, is a pig goat. Her cheek mark, as we all know, is a heart, and her official canonical height is 5'2, which I think would put Marco around 5'4, 5'5, Marco short, because he's not that much taller than Star. Now, beyond all these attributes, what I find amusing is that Star's charisma is the highest one. Star's charisma is very important to her actions and the people she influences. So while her wisdom's at an 11, her charisma is what will come into play as she becomes a great queen. Moving on from Star is Skywin, or Skyween, the queen of ours. As we can see with the illustration attached to her card, she is utilizing the Warner Core Stampede spell. Now, this could insinuate she's the one who invented the spell, or it was simply her signature move. We'll get confirmation of this in the spellbook. Whether or not the Warner Core Stampede appears in her chapter, now it's fitting they do show the Warner Core Stampede as we associate that spell with Star. And Skywin definitely looks a lot like Star. Out of all the queens, she has the closest resemblance to her. The blonde hair, the cheeks, the eyes, although I'm definitely noticing a gold motif, which is weird because this differs from her design and Star Marco's guide to mastering every dimension, where she was more of a redhead. But while we're here, her brief mention in the book explains that she added a lot of great spells, most involving time and movement. Her roly sign is a silkworm, her height is five feet, and her cheek mark symbol is an hourglass. Looking at her attributes, she's very smart, very constitutional, and very wise, wisdom being her strongest attribute. However, her charisma is only a seven, which tells me she may have been the awkward type. Next up is our homegirl, Eclipsa, the Queen of Darkness. And I wonder if Muni themselves had any influence on making these cards, because her Aeroli sign is a demon. We see her monster love Globgore by her side in this illustration. Her height is 5'2", so she's the exact same height as Star. Her cheek mark, of course, is spades, and her attributes show she has more raw strength than Star, the same level of charisma, definitely more wise, and possesses more intelligence than Star. Having the same level of charisma is definitely a key detail, as it shows why they bounce off each other so well, and they behave in a similar
similar fashion. Also, if you look at the little butterflies at the top of each card, Eclipse is a five pointer, which appears to be the maximum, ranking her as a strong and valiant queen. Next up, who made her debut in Into the Wand via Tapestry, is Star's great great grandmother Shy. Selena the Shy. We still don't know too much about her besides the fact she holds a lot of cosmic secrets. Her Aeroli sign is Ponyhead. Her height is exactly five feet. She's a shorty. Her cheek mark is a crescent moon, and she has slightly different stats. She isn't very strong or constitutional, but is fairly wise, excels at potion crafting, and excels at shyness. And this might sound weird, but these attributes really give me the vibe of a geeky kind of science girl who spends all her time researching, experimenting, doesn't really get out much, and to a lesser extent, she reminds me of Velma from Scooby-Doo. Again, I don't know why, she just does. But yeah, very, very interesting. Moving on though, oh ho, Justin, the boy queen. Boy, what? Now, immediately what caught my attention, besides the fact this is a male queen, is that his butterfly ranking is one. This dude is getting no love because he's a male. Maybe. Probably. It adds up. Now he has a pet dino along his side. His height clocks in at six feet, so he's definitely tall among the other queens. And his Aroli sign is Bog Slug. He's fairly strong. Not that constitutional. Not that wise. Doesn't have that much charisma. But evidently excels at math. Now a boy queen. How is this possible? What purpose does Justin serve? Well, I think this may have been mentioned in Star Marvel's Guide to mastering every dimension, but Channel Frederator recently cited in their recent 107 Facts video about Star is simply the result of when a queen has a male child. That male becomes heir to the throne, but he doesn't become king, he becomes queen, which is sort of weird, but it makes sense. I'm assuming that means whoever he wed was king regardless of gender. If he married a boy, then that boy would be king. If he married a girl, then that girl would be king. As for a way, how would he have kids if he married a boy? We see the high of Muni clearly isn't above adoption. No tea, no shade. Now, what I find interesting is that we actually don't see Justin's wand. Or do we? Now, I'm making a wild guess here. But at the corner of his illustration, we see a heart with feathers. Above that heart with feathers is his little dino friend. It almost looks attached. What if that little dino friend is the wand? It's definitely different and definitely makes an impression. But we won't have confirmation until again. The spellbook comes out in July. Moving on, another brand spanky new queen is Estrella the Drafted. Her Aroli sign is Blowhole, her cheek mark appears to be a flower, or at least a flower type shape, and her height is 5'5", five five, so she's not as tall as Justin, but one of the taller queens in general. Now fittingly enough, Estrella uses her wand as a pen, which we saw Star do at the end of Raid the Cave, but whereas Star's is more of an attachment, it looks like Estrella's wand was a pen at all times, and evidently she wrote a lot. Now, call me crazy. But the fact she's called Estrella the Drafted and we see her writing in a notebook, Estrella could have very well been the very first Queen of Muni. That what she's writing right here could have became the spell book. Or she just liked to write a lot and that led to her making a lot of spells. Either or. Now when it comes to attributes, her intelligence and wisdom is on par with each other. Both clocking in at 16. And she had decent charisma too. You go girl. Overall, out of all the queens, she captivates me the most. I want to hear her story. What also contributes to the idea of her being the very first queen is that look at the background. There's no buildings, no castles, it's just land. Alright, moving on from Estrella, someone we know was dear to Moon and introduced in the episode Moon the Undaunted is her late mother, Comet the Chef. And as we see from her illustration, Moon is chowing down on a cupcake. So Comet clearly liked to cook. That makes me wonder, was her wand a spatula? Because we don't see her wand here. It does give me the idea that her wand took the form of some kind of kitchen you Tencil. Her rolly sign is Narwhal, which Narwhal Blast. Her height is exactly 5 feet, and her cheek mark is a butterfly. And looking at her attributes, she was not a queen to mess with. She was as strong as Star, which Star is pretty strong. Her dexterity wasn't too far off. She was very smart, very constitutional, very wise, and had high charisma. So the fact Toffee managed to kill her shows that Toffee himself was in a league of his own. Comet was clearly one of the more impressive queens of Muni. 
Despite her love for cooking, we can tell she had the skill set to uphold all her duties as queen. And I really hope we get the story of how Toffee killed her, what he used. Moving on from Comet, we have Crescenta the Eager, another strong queen working in at Five Butterflies. Her wand actually isn't too off from stars, having a giant heart instead of a giant star. Her early sign is Hydea, which I believe is just a Hydra. Her height is 5'2", and her cheek mark is a bunny wabbit. Again, you can tell she was definitely one of the stronger queens just looking by her attributes. Pretty good strength, high dexterity, intelligence, was very constitutional, although she was alright in the wisdom category, and had low charisma. And again, the low charisma, but yet her title was Crescenta the Eager, paints a picture of a really awkward teenager to me, so hopefully the Book of Spells will have quite amusing stories about her. Next up, our queen, our liege, Moon the Undaunted. Her rolly sign is a dead horse, her rolly sign is a dead horse, her cheek marks a diamond, and her her height is 5'7", so Moon is one of the taller queens. She's stronger than Star, has common sense, is very smart, very wise, is very charismatic, and fairly constitutional. Also like the illustration of Moon in her younger days blasting off Toffee's finger. That was clearly a very proud moment for her, being represented not only in the tapestry, but on this trading card. Now, moving on from Moon is a queen that probably didn't do so well, the Hernia the Heat, only having one butterfly attribute, so besides Besides Justin, she's the only one. Her early sign was a warncorn. Her cheek mark is just a dot. Her height is 4'2", so she was a shorty, like shorter than most. Her strength, not available. Dexterity, not available. Intelligence, not available. Constitution, not available. How did she become queen? Next up, Meteor's replacement is Festivia the Fun. Her early sign is a pixie. Her height is 6'1", so dang, she was taller than Justin. And her cheek mark is sort of a diamond, but more of a star, the ones that filled Star Moon's eyes when they're in the butterfly forms. She was fairly strong, fairly intelligent, high in dexterity, a bit lower in the constitutional part, not that wise, but very charismatic. Which makes sense as according to Star Marco's guidebook, she was more or less a distraction. She was a party kind of girl. And this all makes a lot more sense now, as since she was Meteor's replacement, no one would suspect her heritage or rifle passage as queen if they were too busy partying it up with her. Whoop, whoop. Next up, my favorite queen, Solaria the Monster Carver. Rigging in at five butterflies, her rolly sign is Lion Dragon. Lion Dragon? That's that's badass. Her height is 6'3". So she was an Amazonian, and her cheek mark is a lightning bolt. Her strength is 20. One of her attributes is cold determination at 18. She's fairly intelligent, fairly constitutional, fairly wise, and it's a, like a lightsaber sword, it's, oh my god. I, I can just fangirl over Solaria all day. Like, uh, oof, I really need a flashback with her. I need an entire episode just from her perspective, which I think we're gonna get in season four. With, you know, Globgor about to be released, <laughs> things are gonna get messy. Guys, I, I just really love Solaria, okay? Always have, always will be. She She's beautiful, she's fierce, she's badass. Like, if they ever made a Star vs. the Forces of the Evil game, I would pray she's an unlockable character because I, um, I would main her. I would main her. And finally, clocking in at five butterflies is Rhino the Riddle. Her rolly sign is Tadpole, her height is 5'5", five five, and her cheek mark symbol is the infinity sign. And we see that she's holding some kind of Rubik's Cube in the center, and she's amazed by it. There's this entity, this power, this magic source that just captures her eye. And I believe she's the only queen with glasses. Dorky glasses as well. No, no, no. I take back what I said about Selena the Shy being Velma. This is Velma. Or Android 21. Or any other attractive nerdy character. If Estrella wasn't the first queen, I think Rhina might have been. At the very least, she's definitely one of the more powerful ones. Her actual strength is pretty average coming in at 14. Her wrist power is 20. Which, what the hell does that mean? She's fairly intelligent and wise. She's constitutional. Doesn't have that much charisma. But actually, now that I think about it, looking at that cube, that glow in the center almost makes out a butterfly shape, almost. So under the idea that Rhino was the very first queen, what if this cube was the very first wand, or would become the very first wand? That's actually insane to think about, but what else could it be? It appears as if it's floating, as she's holding it without actually touching it. Her cheek marks being the infinite symbol? Infinite magic? I don't know, I just I just feel like this, que this queen in general is an important one. She definitely has 
has some kind of strong bond with magic. And if this illustration isn't the origin of the wand, it has to be the origin of something great with magic in the world of the show. And I can't wait for them to reveal exactly what that is. But guys, that brings us to an end. That was all the 13 Queens of Muni. We have a boy queen, we have a deadbeat, we have the possible origin of the magic wand and the magic spellbook, and I can't wait to get more information on all of these queens when the star spellbook comes out in July. But what do you guys think? Who's your favorite queen? Again, mine is Solaria, hands down. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, or tweet them directly to me at Vox, or at the Roundtable on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Roundtable Vids. Leave your own theories about them. If you want to help us grow, join the Roundtable and become a member on Patreon. You get access to a lot of perks and have your name featured at the end of the video like all these beautiful, wonderful people. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications, stay in the loop of all things Star. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Ostrich Vox, out.